Hi, Marcus. Hi, can you hear me well? Yes, I can. Okay, wonderful audio works. So, That's great. Great having you, Marcus. And you're going to talk about blues, about the next release of uh, Blue Spies. Um, yes, work and no. Yes, um, of course, we know, we all know Marcus. And uh, and the blues, you're the CTO. Do, do you call that CTO? You're the technical, the, the technical guy at uh, Hollow Belt. A person for everything related with technology at Hollow Belt. Yes. Okay. So, um, yes, uh, thank you. Um, I want to talk about um, a feature of uh, Blue Spice 4, which uh, is um, about to be released. Let me just share my screen. Now in finite loop mode. Um, okay, so um, yeah, just a bit of a background. Um, uh, I'm from Hello World. We um, create a extension suite or a software called Blue Spice, which is of course based on MediaWiki and also includes semantic MediaWiki. Um, and we are about to release a new major version, which is called Blue Spice 4. Um, and um, there are some new features, new changes in it. Um, and I want to pick out particularly one of those features. Um, that's uh, workflows, um, because I think that is a um, uh, very interesting uh, approach. Um, we have here a flexible approach. Um, and um, if, of course, uh, it might be of interest for the audience here. So um, what am I going to tell you? Um, how do workflows feel? How do they work? How do they grow? And how does it integrate in semantic media with key? Um, so uh, I think most of this, uh, I hope I can do it in, in the live systems. Uh, please bear with me if something breaks. It's um, leading edge um, technology. <clears throat> so um, what is a workflow and why do we need them? So basically, um, when you work with documents, then um, uh, you come across the need of having somebody, for example, approve a page before you can say, OK, this is now a stable page. Or you want to uh, somebody to give you feedback on that, and that is um, part of a process typically. So um, you have um, uh, the, 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 the documents, the, the, the content that is managed in a wiki is in, within an organization is typically not um, only brainstorming content, but um, quite a bit of it is also like controlled content where um, the, the pages, the articles are embedded in like uh, bigger processes of the company and um, you want um, for certain changes or publications or certain versions of a page, you want to have um, another person um, give you feedback or approve that page. So that's how where workflows come in. Um, uh, with this feature, you can basically um, uh, send a page from person A to person B to person C and whatever. Um, and um, request some actions from them. And then once this, um, these actions are done, so the workflow is, is um, uh, uh, finished, um, then basically um, you do something with the page. So either um, you just say, okay, workflow is done. Um, we have that recorded somewhere um, or uh, in combination with flag drafts, um, you can also publish um, such a page, such a uh, page that is um, approved by a workflow. Now, um, this has, in, in, in the older Bluespice versions, we had some very old implementation. This was one of the oldest features of Bluespice, so we decided to rewrite it. Um, so how does it work? Basically, um, on any page, I have this start a workflow um, dialog um, where I can select um, one of those workflows. They are predefined. Um, I'm going to talk about that a bit later. And um, yeah, so you have um, certain types of, of flows um, that you can add 
Um, so let's just uh, take one of them, say that's a single user feedback. Um, and I choose that and then a form opens uh, where I can add that user. I'm here, you see this is a local host. So I usually typically work as wiki sysop. So I'm wiki sysop. Um, I can give some instructions. Um, please confirm things. And um, this also allows me to send um, the confirmation um, report to a email or a username. Um, what you also have seen is we're using a concept here. So, so I'm, you know, we are all software developers, so some of us, so I will give you a little bit of a background. We use a concept of um, staged dialogues. Or, um, so these are dialogues that consist of, more, of multiple steps. Um, so uh, as you say, saw, so I um, had the first dialogue where I chose the workflow. Um, now I have this form and now I can start the workflow. If I choose another workflow, then um, I might just um, requesting or the workflow might just request a different set of data because that other type of workflow um, requires another set of data. So let's go back. Um, I probably have to retype it now. Um, okay, so let's assign myself and I need to please do something. Always be friendly, of course. And then we start that workflow, uh, which essentially um, uh, puts that page into a uh, mode, um, some sort of a, a log mode um, where a workflow is running on that page and um, action is required. Um, now, if, uh, as you can see, I'm, um, I'm the person who actually has to do something here. Um, so uh, I can check the details of this workflow here, um, which, uh, you know, who started it? Um, is there uh, any pending actions, like not only from me, from other people or um, any um, sort of information? And of course, that this is currently running. Um, I also... Um, have uh, a overview now. Um, well, let's, uh, I get back to that later. So let's just finish that one. Um, so now it's my turn uh, in this simple process because it was just requesting feedback from one user, which was myself. So I like to talk to myself. Um, and um, I click on complete action now and I get another of those forms with the instructions and I can comment um, something done. And now I submit this and the workflow's done, basically. So what happened um, in this case, uh, the recipient or the, the, the request of the workflow got an email with my remarks. So I gave that person some sort of feedback. Um, and um, that's all of the traces we have here. Now, if it gets more complex, um, we might have a flag drafts uh, behind, so we get a approved version of that page, for example, or things like that. Um, we could also um, do any sort of, um, of actions here. Um, now, uh, this, of course, uh, requires some sort of flow. So um, let me just uh, start one of those workflows again, so I can show you how I actually know um, I do have a workflow, so this is up. It, uh, let's speed things up. Now, I start the workflow again. Workflow is here on that page. Action is required, but now you know I'm not typically on a page where the action is required. So of course, um, I get some information. So we have um, notifications here, um, which is just uh, the normal um, echo um, no notifications. Um, but also you can see that um, I have an indicator here that I do have open tasks. So I can click on that open task overview page. And, uh, <clears throat> and here um, you see a list of all the pending tasks I have. So this task overview um, is currently built only for the workflow, um, but we, we are planning to integrate um, other sorts of actions that are required from you in, within the wiki. Um, this is also searchable, of course, and now I can yeah, click on that task. I guess that's pretty self-evident. So when I click on the task, I get to the page in question, and now I can do things again. From a uh, manager perspective, um, there's also a task overview, workflows overview page that's um, 
put here. Um, it's a special page that lists all the workflows that are currently ongoing, or if you uh, want to do some research for um, uh, uh, d like as, as an audit, you can also go to um, all and um, see all the workflows that have ever been run um, on that system. Okay, so that's roughly, um, that's, that's a very, um, of course, a very simple workflow. We can um, extend that. So that's um, roughly how it feels uh, from the interface side of things. Now, uh, let me just switch back to my cool presentation. You know, I didn't trust my local host system, so I put a lot of screenshots in here. Um, and um, so now, how, um, how does this work? Um, what's actually required to use these workflows? Um, uh, just a second. Okay. Um, how does this work? Um, we have at the heart of, of this um, engine, um, we use event sourcing. Um, we use a system called event source and that basically creates a set of events uh, which you can listen to um, and which you can also um, replay or rewind. Um, this is an important feature because some of those workflows require you to go back um, a few steps. So for example, if you do a approval uh, where the approval of, of three people is required and uh, person three um, says, no, I'm not going to approve this. It might be necessary to just go back one step to person two and person two has then um, some action to do and, and then it goes back to person three. So this kind of, um, of flows are very easy um, uh, to model uh, with the event source um, engine, uh, event source and uh, based on event sourcing. Um, but that's that's like the inner core, the heart of this um, thing. Um, then uh, we have the, yeah, I, you know, um, I try to um, use a metaphor here, like your body. Um, so we have the organs, the things that actually, the, the, the entities that actually do things. And these are the activities. So activities, they are coded um, and they actually do something. And as you can see here, um, we um, we started with a, um, a set of activities, but um, we intend, of course, to expand this. And also, um, activities can be expanded by um, um, by anyone who uses this, basically. So, um, say you would need a um, an activity that um, adds some form content to a content slot which by the way is a feature um, I really love um, and, and thanks for the presentation, that is so great. Um, so we could write a uh, activity that is write data to the content slot um, activity and we could include that in a workflow um, at any point. And as you see here, we do have a send mail activity, for example, or a vote activity or a custom form input activity. So there are um, all kinds of things. And that was um, by design, we wanted to create this workflow in uh, such a way that it is uh, maximally extensible um, and that we can use it um, in like a really a lot of context um, and we can make it fulfill a lot of, um, of actual tasks. So um, how do these activities uh, relate to each other and how is the data flow? Um, that's the veins in my um, body metaphor. Um, so of course, um, you all know flow diagrams and things like that. And um, one of the most uh, commonly used um, uh, standards here is BPMN, uh, Business Process, Process Modeling N something. Um, that's uh, that's a, um, uh, a standard where you can actually have um, these cool graphics. Um, but on the other hand, this is executable. Um, so the, in the end, um, BPMN produces an XML file, uh, which can be executed. And um, that's actually what we do. Um, we, we do use BPMN as a um, language here. Um, 
and um, we can execute those BPMN diagrams. Of course, having said that, um, if you just create any BPMN diagram, it will not help. It would need some additional information, but you can model your workflow in a BPMN editor uh, and then enrich that workflow, that, that, that XML um, with workflow data and uh, thus create workflows of any complexity. Um, by the way, this is a real example. So this is um, the um, document control workflow, which uh, that's what we call it. Um, then uh, the uh, the last um, block here is um, a forms um, extension, um, which uh, yeah we we also um, worked on some sort of forms um, creation creator and, and uh, form editor which you can see here, um, which produces forms in the wiki. You can see that the topic of forms is something that's like boiling in the uh, media wiki community at the moment um, and there is uh, quite a lot of initiatives that work with forms or that create some sort of forms engine and we are one of them um, now these forms are the ones that you could actually see when we just execute the workflow so these forms do collect the data um, and uh, you can model them according to your needs so um, by the way, I have, from time to time, I switch back because I don't see the, the chat. So if you have anything important, um, then just feel free um, to talk to me. Oh, um, what's event sourcing? So event event sourcing, not even sourcing. Um, it's, it's not that um, leftist thing, but it's, um, it's more like um, you can think of it as a message queue. Um, and we are pushing messages to the queue and um, on another side, we can read those messages. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. So how, um, how can we actually extend that workflow? Um, so first of all, the things you have seen or I have shown you um, are hard coded in our extension. So this is the extension code and you can see um, like a a form, that's the edit request form, for example, which is um, defined in JSON, um, or you can see the group feedback BPMN um, uh, process. And um, yeah, I just wanted to show you, so I can just take that code um, and add it to a, let's say a random BPMN editor, which is BPMN IO, for example. Um, yeah, I just, sorry, I have to open from file, but that's similar. So let's just take that document control. BPMN um, flow, which is also part, as you can see here, of um, my Blue Spice uh, system. Now I open it and that's exactly the flow we just saw. So um, this is uh, the BPMN um, code, which executes here, or which, which can be used. Um, now, the more interesting question, of course, is how can I extend this without writing code? Because that's <coughs> that's what, um, say, people who use these systems like, and that's also what we, um, I guess, as a community, as a semantic media wiki community, media wiki community like about the system. So we, we like to not having to code things, but we just want to go to a wiki and write pages and then extend things. And um, uh, for that purpose, um, I created um, in my, my local wiki, I created a um, page that is called checklist.bpmn. Um, and um, that checklist.bpmn page um, basically defines a new workflow. I obviously, um, you can see that I copied things from um, the other um workflows here and um, i changed uh, some elements so um that we can have a little bit of a different user experience here um one of the most notable things i changed was um, i used a custom form which has the very creative name marcus test um i'm known for uh, my creativity when it comes down to examples so this is um, this is the form and this form, again, is defined in the wiki. 
So um, in the wiki, uh, we have a um, forum called Marcus Test, um, which essentially is um, also a JSON representation as we can see it here in the code. I mean, a little bit different, of course, because it has different elements. And I can now go and, um, um, and edit this uh, form. Um, there's still a, a slight bug in here, so we have to use edit source, but in fact, we are not editing the source, but we use a form editor. And then you can see that's the form. And now I can, um, for example, um, add another checkbox, which produces some sort of some data, which I might need. So I give it a label that is, are you totally sure? And um, I have to uh, to check that before um, the workflow executes. I mean, um, of course, this is currently all playing around, um, but uh, let's put the group in front. Right. So rearrange things a little bit. Um, now I submit this. You can see I just changed that form. Um, it looks uh, now different, you can see it has a U-shape, so just for um, uh, for recognition. And just by adding those two things, a BPMN file and a, and a form, and the form, of course, is required only if I need special sorts of input, um, I can now um, go to my main page where we had that um, workflows before. Um, and um, yeah, let me just complete this. Okay, um, and now uh, you can see in the list of workflows, I do have that checklist here. So um, I can select it. Of course, I cheated a little bit on you because I had that checklist before because I did put that demo data for testing purposes. Um, so I have that checklist and I can choose and now it actually uses the form we just defined. Um, and um, I can fill in the data here um, as I want. Um, and it can be reused throughout the workflow. So that's the idea. We pre-fill it with data and then throughout the workflow, we can access that data and we can do something with it. Um, and um, yeah, uh, uh, change the workflow accordingly. Okay, so um, that is how we do it, um, how you can basically use it in a wiki. You don't have to code it. Um, also the form. Now, um, the question is, um, how does it integrate? Um, and uh, of course, that is where, um, where the magic begins for people like us, um, what we can actually do is um, we can use the XML and add wiki text to it. So um, interestingly, um, just today I had uh, some code commit to review where um, a colleague of mine, Robert Vogel, who um, I guess you also know, um, started adding um, uh, dynamic elements to that um to that wiki text so um what do we see here we have um we have a property and it is preferred with a value that comes from um, a show query in this case um so what does this look like um let's go back to the live data here we are so as you can see, I have one um, uh, uh, one input field here, which says current hits. Um, now that's the data we get from um, we get from uh, properties of that page, and that's the hit counter property. So um, it was one eight eight uh, one eight four zero. Um, that's the number of page views. Um, and how do we do this? It's it's fairly simple. So in checklist BPMN, in my BPMN file, um, what I did was um, I executed a show uh, command um, of the current page and I just query the um, the property hit counters. <laughs> right. Um, so I guess um, I don't have to mention it, but I, I still do it. Um, 
that access to semantic data to all kinds of data that's in the wiki, of course, creates um, creates endless possibilities. So I can um, not only gather the data, but of course, what you can also do is um, you could you could uh, switch the form of your workflow. You could um, use uh, semantic values to decide whether workflow should take path A or path B. Um, I'm even thinking of um, things like you could you could um, exclude steps or completely skip steps depending on um, on semantics and that way you can integrate the data you already have with the the workflow engine that actually um, asks you to do multiple multi-steps um, uh, workflows on that page and um, that is where um, I personally grew really excited about um, this thing because it once again shows me um, how um, how uh, how how big how flexible the 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 the, the wiki is um, how much we can uh, quickly um, change behaviors in even complex ways if um, uh, without having to code things um, and we can we can shape that according to a lot of needs and um, and edge core cases and um, yeah um, things like that so um, that was a quick overview of what's what's going on um, of course uh, this um, as I said, this is extensible. So we um, currently will publish um, a set of um, two or three workflows um, plus a set of a few of, uh, forms. But um, essentially, um, this is meant to be extended uh, with all kinds of real life uh, examples and use cases. Um, and uh, to that end, of course, um, this extension is published. Um, so. Uh, here is um, here are the links. Um, you can see uh, the code. Um, actually, I I just um, put the GitHub uh, code here um, because I don't like the, the code view in um, Garrett, and we currently um, do not have an extension page on MediaWiki yet. So this is bleeding edge development. Um, but uh, of course, in the long run, we will have um, pages on MediaWiki org, so you can more easily find those extensions. Um, and uh, of course, we've, we, we're happy if you want to try it out, we're happy to help. Um, so this, uh, these two extensions don't even require uh, Blue Spice as a, as a big, like you don't have to use all of Blue Spice, you can just take these extensions. So that's part of a strategy change, maybe if you want to put it that way um, in, in our extension development. Um, and um, I'm, I'm happy, um, or my team, we are happy to, um, to help. And of course, we would like to see you guys also trying this out and, and playing around with it and maybe give us feedback on where we can improve. Okay, I think I talked a lot, maybe too much. Um, are there any questions? Yes. How much time did it took did it take you to bring this to work? Oh, um, I think we started um, conceptualizing this um, about a year ago, um, and um, that um, that is a yeah. So um, a year from from the idea to actually getting this live. Um, uh, right, reading right. from the uh, from the um, chat, uh, the question is: Is there any documentation? Um, not yet. So, um, uh, Blue Spice Four is um, now available on the demo, so you can preview it. Uh, we did not yet publish the code. Uh, you can see it in the repository, so that is the the best anchor I can give you. Um, but um, we will definitely um have uh, documentation on the um, MediaWiki um, uh, mediawiki.org page uh, extension uh, namespace soon ish 
Soonish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know how things are. <laughs> that's that's yeah. the course of course and curse of software development. Right? There's always so much to do. All right. Ah, Richard. Yeah, Richard just says um, the first documentation in on the help desk about this extension should be available next week. Um, so um, that's it. I think we can't wait to have a look, uh, Marcus. Looks very exciting. Wonderful, thank you. Um, okay. Questions, I think that's it. I think Perfect. I'm that uh, yours in. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, um, and enjoy the rest of the conference as I will. Thank you. Thanks.